Hello, hello, hello. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> all right. It's live vibe week. It's art snacks. It's all the things, right? It's 1230 on a Monday afternoon. It's time to take a little break. It is time to play in your journals or just stop working for a minute and watch what I'm doing and do it later. Do it tomorrow morning. Do it whenever. All right. If you're watching, if you're watching the replay, just let me know. Hit hashtag replay right now. Just say, hey, how you doing? Tell me where you're watching from. I always love to see where everybody is watching from. All right. I am going to show you a fun, different way to kind of well, there's two, there's always, I always have a lesson behind what I teach you guys. And if you become a member of uh, either one of the memberships, Art Snacks membership or the Circle membership, you'll start to see that there's always a method behind my madness. I'm giving um, instruction that's actually like mini art school and I'm teaching you a lot of things about art. So today we're going to do a little bit of color work um, and we're going to make a pocket. For those of you, like the prompt today was um, rustic elements from nature or just elements. So you could grab burlap twine, right? Or use uh, twigs, leaves, flowers, any of the things that you find outside. Either or it works, right? Um, but some of you might not know what to do with those. And I'm going to show you just a cute little pocket to make, kind of, sort of, um, to kind of put your elements in or whatever. This is just a fun one. All right. So let's turn you down. If you're here, like I said, give a hello. Um, always fun to give a little um, shout out as well. Let me know you're here. Let me make sure you guys can see, and you can. All right, you see I have watercolors here and just a basic brush today. Super simple, all right? And I am using uh, nine, just a student grade. Guys, like, this is a really great book. It's just Artist Loft, so Michael's watercolor pad. I think even when it's on sale, when it's not on sale, it's not expensive, but I think it goes on sale for like almost four dollars. It's just 90 pound watercolor paper. 90 pound watercolor paper is nice to use when we make, you know, our bits for our bits box and all those things. Um, it's also good. It's got a little give uh, for a pocket, unless, you know, you want to use your 140 pound watercolor paper. That's up to you. Remember, if you have any questions or anything while I'm on the live, I will make sure I go in and answer them. Um, so some things, well, here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with, so if any of my members are watching, any of you circle ladies, remember earlier in the month, we talked about um, using the three primaries, right? Three primary colors to get all the other colors that we want. I want you to try to do this. We'll talk about this in the Joy Journal in a little bit. The rest of you, a little color theory, okay? So you can use a red. Well, that's not the best red. It's kind of a yellow or a rosy. A yellow, right? And a blue. And all of those colors. And I know that I have, um, there's a reel on this somewhere. <laughs> all right, let me kind of put that there and grab that red is going to make a different kind of an orange because it's that rose color. It's interesting. It's an interesting color. And let's put, we'll put the purple here. And I'm just going to touch into that and we're going to have a little bit, like I said, this rose color lends itself to be very different. But see that? You got your primaries, you get three more colors and you mix all these together and you get a whole gamut of colors. You can make all of your circles using just the three primaries that you chose. Or you can choose a complementary. Remember complementary, where is, here it is. Com 
complementary colors are our colors opposite each other on the color wheel. So red and green, right? Those are complementary colors. That doesn't mean that you can't use pink and like a deep, deep green, okay? It's, it's all of the tints, tones, and shades that fall in there. I am going to use um, orange and blue, or really a blue green and a red orange. I kind of just love that. I could, I, well, maybe actually the one I just did is blue green and red orange. I'm gonna use yellow green and red violet, okay? I'm gonna go opposite this way. Let me show you. So all these red violets and yellow greens. All right, let's use those colors. Let's see what I even have for those colors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to get my brush good and wet and my watercolors, and I'm just going to start. And what am I going to start doing? Painting circles. Just painting circles. So I have this one color. I'm going to do a few different, different sizes. All right. So remember, our journal workshop starts tomorrow. It's not too late to get in. Don't worry if you can't be there for the live every single night. You don't need to be. You have access for a long time to the end of the year for this little workshop. It's a fun one. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do do. We'll be making these little journals. So day one, I will show you my painting process of recreating an old can or re. What's the word I'm looking for? Re repurposing an old canvas. Let's start there. All right, we're gonna dig into the sap green, and I'm gonna use this one straight out, and we'll see what we end up with when we start mixing some colors together. Just gonna put a few of these here. Uh, so day one in the workshop, we're gonna repurpose a canvas or you can use a brand new canvas. Day two, we're gonna talk all about signatures. Signatures are the book, the stack of papers inside of a journal, right? Sometimes we want a writing journal. Sometimes we want an artist journal where, you know, it holds up to doing something like we're doing right now, today. All right, I'm just gonna come in with a darker green. So basically I'm gonna work with greens and purples. And you're just going to create circles. It's very relaxing, this. Very relaxing. I'm gonna do a little one right here. So everything is very wet right now, right? They're wet. Just kiss that. And I want to, I'm gonna flat out overlap here. So why they're wet, you wanna practice some overlapping and then you're gonna overlap also later when they're dry. Okay. So just kind of play in your circles. In there. I'm gonna go for a much deeper purple because I want to, I wanna get a little, a little more fall tones in here. So I'm going to kind of just dull some of my tones. I'm gonna to come in here and definitely let these two bleed together. It's still a little bit wet, right? So we're gonna have that bleed. And hit that there, just a little bit more purple. Let's see, let's kind of bring one here. You're kind of getting the, the, getting the gist of it, right? We've got some purples, some violets, some greens. And we're gonna bring it all together. You'll see, you'll see. And we're 
gonna sneak, oops, that's really not the, I stuck my, I meant to get more of the gray purple. I definitely want some of that in here. I want some of this to dry. I'm gonna put a big one here just cause I can. Just because I can. And then I'm gonna grab the dryer real quick. I still will be done with well within a half an hour, my friends. We're gonna blot a little bit. Typically I wouldn't blot, but I'm going to for time's sake. A little bit of it dry and a little blot. You know, I don't necessarily like how light when I blot it makes it, but for time's sake, I wanna kind of scooch along here. I just want to get things a little more dry so that I can show you, you know, like when our circles are wet, they bleed into each other, right? And we get these beautiful blooms. Love that look. But we don't always want that look. Sometimes we want a layered effect. And so we're just going to work a little bit, get these a little bit drier. So I can layer the other way. There you guys can see. There we go. So we just needed to dry that just a little bit. It's not perfect. All right. Now, let's come in. And I got my kind of gray tone here. I'm going to come right over, right over these. All right, see that? So we're just kind of giving a little layer. Now on your out, outer edge, you do want to start paying attention to how you're going to pop your colors in here. If I want this one a little bit darker, even, you know, it's it's dry, but I can wet over the top and give it another layer. <clears throat> this one might be good. And we'll layer these right into each other. And we'll come over here. Where am I? Yep. There we go. And you start to see how you kind of just keep layering your circles. It's fun. It's very relaxing. It might not seem it right now as I'm rushing along to get some things done. But trust me, <laughs> trust me, trust me, it's good. All right, we're just going to put a little one right here. I, want, I don't want too much white space. So a little white space is a good thing, but not too much. All right, so now let's get some more green going. But I want to dull down my sap green a little bit. I need a little... You need it dulled down a little bit. And how do you dull a color down? You add its complement. Right? So you just add its complement and you get a little bit of that gray tone. So we're going to come here. Let's see what we get. There we go. And definitely up here. And we need a little one here. I'm almost, I'm almost going to be done with this one. I just want to close in this gap. I'm not really done, but I'm going to be done for now and jump to the one that I've done already so I can carry on with you guys and show you what, I'm, what I've got going on here. Let's add another bright out here. I want to show you how to kind of close in this gap here. Let's grab some mauve and we're going to take this one in here. That's pretty. 
There we go. All right, now see this line? This is the line. Ah! <laughs> well, we're going to cut that off anyways. That's the line I'm looking at. That's the line I'm looking at. And with that, let's, let's come back to this deeper green and just come right in here. I know purple and green might be a little weird for everybody to kind of look at. I think it's a good, I think it's a fun combination. All right. It is not perfect. It is not done. I have a lot of white, but I want to. Show you. Basically, what you're going to do is once it's dry, I'm really missing. I had to order a new uh, watch. I think it's supposed to show up tomorrow. I really hope so. Let me just tell you, I'm really missing it. <laughs> All right, it's not perfect. It's not dry. Don't do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> then, so what you're going to do, is you're just going to, now you could do this, you can paint the whole paper, right, do the whole page circles and just find a spot that you want to cut out, or you can give yourself an edge, kind of like I did here, and just cut. way easier if I would have cut some of that off first. Right, just keeping good circle shapes. Doo -doo. Getting them there. And so see how you do have to pay a little bit of attention on that edge so that you get a really sweet edge. See that? That's what we're going for. All right. I have this one and two that I've done. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use these. Well, you can use them for a thousand things. All right. Don't throw any of these pieces away. These are great bits, bits box pieces. But you can come into your journal and um, find a page yesterday. I think the owl's in here too. Um, this page got kind of messy, but I could here. And if I'm going to do that, maybe I want to put a little bit of color down here first. Let me get my mop. Get my mop brush and just add, add a little iridescence here. Remember, this book is made out of mixed uh, media paper, so it's not going to exactly do anything amazing with the watercolor. <laughs> right? but I can add some things in here. Just just some color, just to break the white space before I... There. Well, if we take that, and then we take this, side better. All right, and what I'm going to do is determine where I like it. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to cut this out. little extra just in case and look I mean there are so many things we can do with this let's go here and we're gonna go here um, a good thing to use to make pockets honestly sorry I'm out of frame but I know you can still hear me a really good thing to use to make pockets is a hot glue gun I don't have a hot glue gun plugged in, but I do typically. typically. Not right now. Why? Why? Don't know why. I don't know where my tape runner is. Hmm. 
See what happens when you organize your studio space? I wouldn't use the Yoohoo stick. Typically, those of you that are um, creating along with me definitely use something, you know, a little bit more permanent. Like I was saying, glue, glue guns and a line, a bead of the glue gun works really, really well for a pocket. It really does. All right, so the three sides, we're going to put it in there. There's nothing to say that I won't take this perhaps to the sewing machine and give a little stitch. I'm just going to cut trim this because it drives me crazy when they're not trimmed. So that, the, the Yoohoo stick is not something I recommend using for your pocket. It's just not going to last forever and ever. I'm just doing this right now to show you how we can form a pocket. And we're pretending that, you know, it wasn't raining here or whatnot. And Amy has all kinds of, this one's fun. And I could even glue that there. What else do I have? A few. Let's get some purple. Some purple and blue to play off of that. We got that. I really love the pop of that green in here. And do you see how, like, even just with a little pocket, we've established a page by not even doing anything. If you need a little more, you know, texture, just stuff the pocket with some texture. There you go. Now, of course, my pocket would be glued down better, and I'd have, I would run this right here. Maybe move these. Anyways, there you go. Super fun way to create uh, some fun in your journals. And then with these also, like, you know, it makes a great background for your pieces. Just as a little card, it's just another circle. You're repeating the pattern. You're keeping things the same in your journal. All right, so let me scooch up. Wah. All right, so what do you guys think? Let's see, let's see, how are we doing? Yes, like so any shape, if you wanted to do hearts and cut, you know, cut the heart out along the edge, um, flowers, circles, squares, triangles, anything, it's just a good little way to create a pocket. Pockets can be super fun to add in to a journal page. Now, I need some time, you know, off screen to put some things together. You can even write on your thing, write on your pocket, do all kinds of things. You've just set a background. That's all we did. And by sitting and just kind of painting some circles and doing some other things, you're getting, you're, you're understanding color. You're seeing what you like together. You are, um, it's good, just kind of de-stressors. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'm still under a half an hour. <laughs> All right. So that is today's little art snack. So I will upload this. It'll be over on the tube. Um, we've got tomorrow, tomorrow night, the journal workshop starts. So if you're not in, if you need to know more, the link is here on this live. It is all over the place. You can go to sugarhillartstudio.com and find everything you need to know about the art journal workshop that starts tonight and the membership that opens up on Thursday. The membership, there's two now, two memberships. We have Art Snacks membership, okay? Art Snacks membership is taking what Art Snacks has kind of always been and taking it to the next level. So basically, it's where you're going to get your 21 prompt list. It's where we're going to make a mini journal every month. It's where you're going to get two full length, more detailed, not so hurried as what I did. I would complete, we would go 
further and more in depth to the lesson that I just did, you're gonna get two of those tutorials. Plus there might be some printables. Oh, and the best part is the swaps. So in October, we're making tags and we'll be doing a tag swap. And the swaps will happen between both my memberships. So it'll be the Art Snacks and the Circle membership. Together they'll be swapping. So all you ladies can swap together, super fun. Sometimes it's Stash, sometimes it's ATC. All the fun things, right? Uh, the membership Sugar Hill Circle is all of Art Snacks plus a mixed media, we did this one in the past, a mixed media project, another art project of some sort. Sometimes it's a painting, sometimes it's a three-dimensional, sometimes it's making a junk journal, or mm, I don't know, we'll be making little golden book Christmas journals. Um, we also do a Zumba Zoom party where we just kind of create and chat, get to know each other, hang out, and what else, what else? downloadables, all the things, all the things, all the details are over on sugarhillartstudio.com. Plus the links are here. You can get on the wait list so that you don't miss the opening. We have the journals coming. Things are moving along really, really well. Um, you know, I have one kid in college. I have one that's kind of fully, you know, he's 17. He's kind of very on his own. Um, I'm not teaching this year, so Sugar Hill is my sole income. It is my thing. It is my baby. It is where all my attention is going now, and I'm super, super excited. I'm excited to bring you guys the next level of everything. So if you have questions, you can direct message me. If you need any answers, any anything, you just let me know. Come on over. Thank you for joining uh, Sugar Hill Art Studio, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks. Bye.